Okay, so what's up guys? Well, in this video, I did some tweaking to my real-time scheduler system. I made a lot of changes to give it a more robust feature set. So, I think the highlight of this approach is using the queue. So, what I did is I implemented a ready queue based approach. And what this ready queue does is that it inserts tasks into the queue based on priority. And I already queue is basically a data structure containing like a queue of tasks. And it's a data structure you'll commonly find in like task scheduling algorithms. And what this queue does is that it represents the set of tasks that are ready and, and waiting to be executed by the scheduler. So the ready queue contains tasks that met their um, scheduling criteria and basically they are waiting for the CPU to give them a time for execution. So when we invoke the scheduler, what will happen is that tasks from the ready queue based on the priority and then the tasks will be dispatched for execution. And what I did here is I created a sort of preemptive priority based scheduler and using center around this ready queue system, we'll execute the task to the highest priority from the ready queue. And then once the task is executed, we'll continue running until completion or until a higher priority task becomes ready. So we have no time slicing. So let's, let's walk through the code. So let's see we have, we include the number of tasks. We could have used like a function based approach, like a function pointer based approach for the stars, but considering the resource constraints of the, the microcontroller, it's a bit easier to, and more efficient to do how we do it in there. We have designated tasks rather right, than using like function pointers. We have our structure. This is the task node structure, and we have, well, you know, the task pointer will be pointed to the corresponding task function. We have the task period, the task counter, which is to track the task execution. We have the priority, and only the priority takes the eventual authority. We also have an array of tasks representing all the tasks. We have the highest priority, the lowest priority. We have the pointer for the ready queue. Well, the insert task in the ready queue function, remove task from ready queue. We could initialize the ready queue and then we execute with tasks. I think I'll take some time to explain how these task functions work. So this approach, usually if you're using like a more full feature artist, you'll have a task DNA function. I tried implementing that, but it added a lot of overhead to the code and the compiler isn't optimized as a free version XC8, coupled with being an 8-bit microcontroller. Adding, you know, the task in a function wasn't really working the way I wanted it to. It was working, but the execution speed was around four to four times slower than just using explicitly a delay. But we don't use a delay, you know, we don't use that blocking code. We want everything to be handled by the artist. So this is a compromise I came up with. So what the, what in these tasks, what these tasks is doing is that each time we toggle the LED based on the task period and the task period is compared with the corresponding task counter we have. We put a task counter and then when the counter reaches zero, the LED is toggled and the counter is set to the task period. And this is a very efficient way for doing delays considering the, res the resources and the constraints we have on the system. So we have the run task. The run task will execute the task. But make sure that the ready queue is not empty. And once it's not empty, it will retrieve the first task from the ready queue. And then, of course, we have our main function. And the main function is the entry point where we just have the run task. Then we have the 
um, in drops of routine here, and what this area does is it handles the time as you interrupt. And when the interrupt occurs, we set the interrupt flag, and then we decrement our priority ticks for all the tasks. And if the priority ticks reaches zero, then we'll insert the task back into the ready queue. It's a really efficient, efficient structure. And basically the code works as we'd expect. It does what it's supposed to do. And we have our, our cooperative real-time scheduler system in place. So it's a real-time um, cooperative multitasking system. So let's look at the output so we can see that we achieve what we've been wanting to achieve. <coughs> we can't really see and do some light. But now each LED, the camera doesn't really do it justice for it. Refresh rate. We have each LED blinking at different rates. And this is what we wanted the schedule to achieve. It's a much better improvement from what we implemented before. So I'm um, stick around. I'm going to be covering some more things I want to cover. You're not probably doing wrong robin scheduling. I want to cover how we can handle um, messages and circular buffers and message queues, probably implementing um, a mutex for the system. I have a lot of stuff coming up, so stick around and we'll talk about it in the next video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe.